Rainy Days Productions presents a special sewing of some classic talking book tape players, but not all players. Normally, these machines would all just be players, and this one is only a player. And this one is only a player. And this one was only a player. But this one has been modified. Let's see here, a switch for record or play. And of the side, a jack installed for a microphone. And the jacks on the other side are the standard jacks you find on any of these standard issue talking book cassette players from the Library of Congress. This one was acquired at an estate sale. This one a friend got for me at a thrift store. And this one I found at a thrift store for free. This one's manufacturing date is unknown, but it may be from the late 80s or the early 90s. You can see here, it looked like the warranty expired in June 1997. But I'm wondering if right there, that 88 there might mean 1988, but I'm not sure. This unit here has the date on it. This is the Library of Congress Model C1. Now all these machines are manufactured by Telex. So that's actually the Telex C1. This one's made September 29th, 2004. Unfortunately, it got, there it goes. It's a little bit clearer now. So this is the newest one in the bunch. And one might think with how a lot of things in modern day and 2004 is close enough to the modern day to include it in this statement. One may think that since it's from 2004, it probably has gone greatly down in quality of how well made it is. But believe it or not, even this one from 2004 is very well made. If we look at this one, this is the C76. I think this one is probably from 1976 or around sometime in the late 1970s, or mid to late 1970s. I'm thinking 1976 is when this one is from. Also, the, when you look on the inside, the components are very, it looks very 1970s-y. But the interesting thing is, is that the transport mechanism has a certain design, and that same transport mechanism design is found in the one from 2004. So over almost 30 years, the design had not changed hardly at all. The circuit board's a little bit different. And the speaker grill is, has rounded ridges instead of square ridges on the one from 2004. But the quality of manufacturing did not deteriorate like a lot of things did by 2004, where a lot of things were built really cheaply with planned obsolescence. And I'm very glad that they still built this thing well and solid, even in 2004, which is an unusual thing to find. So anyway, for those of y'all who don't know, these machines are made for use by the blind to listen to talking books, which were books on tape, but not your general um, audio books like you get at the library. Generally, if you go get an audio book tape from the library, it's a standard 1 and 7 eighths, um, two-track mono system. Well, even if it's stereo, it's basically, it's going to be have a side A and a side B, and that's it. But, on these talking book machines, the talking book tapes ran at 15 16 IPS, which is half the standard cassette speed, and had four-track mono. A lot like um, some portable reel-to-reels that had four-track mono, or stereo reel-to-reels that you could choose to record four-track mono on. You have a side one, flip it over, side two, switch the track to the next track, flip it over, side three, flip it over again, side four. That means on one C60 cassette, which is 30 minutes per side, or an hour total recording time at 1 and 7 eighths, half track mono or stereo, actually 
technically it would be quarter track stereo. But on a standard C60 cassette, you get 60 minutes total. That's both sides added together. But if you use a C60 cassette with four track mono and half the speed, the audio quality is not as good at 178, but you get four hours worth of recording on one C60 cassette. If you use a C120 cassette, you have a whopping eight hours. One could record, if one was in high school or elementary school, and for some reason he wanted to record his entire day at school, he could use one C120 cassette and he could get every single moment of the school day from going to school, eating lunch, going to the bathroom, everything recorded. And now that's just, I really like the idea of long play recording. I love being able to record for a long time. And I, what I really wish is that they made the two speeds standard for all cassette units. You know, like, you know a lot of micro cassette machines are standard to have uh, 15 sixteenths and then the 1532s or put it in metric as they say on the uh, micro cassette units, you have 2.4 centimeters per second, which is 15 sixteenths inches per second, and then you have 1.2 centimeters per second. I mean, if they made it standard to have two speeds on a cassette from the get-go, that would have been great. But the weird thing about the quarter track mono system on these is that, let me just draw a little diagram. On a standard mono half track mono cassette, Side A, you record on the bottom half of the tape. You flip it over, and it's recording on the other half of the tape. A stereo one uses that same size as that bottom half, except it records two tracks. But for the talking book machines, the tracks are separated like you find on a reel-to-reel, -reel, a four-track reel-to-reel system. So you can't use a standard stereo tape head um, with the talking book format. It uses tracks 1 and 3 and then 2 and 4 just like on a reel to reel. Which is kind of annoying because I can't use a regular stereo head. Um, but then at the same time it's I guess it's kind of cool. But Anyway, that's what they chose for the talking book cassettes. So this machine I successfully was able to transfer, I mean to, to um, make into a recorder. Um, here is a Sony TC50 cassette recorder from 1968. I'll need to upload a video I made of this back in June. I, need, I mean, you're going to be watching this video and you're going to realize I haven't uploaded a video to YouTube since June 20th. And you're going to be like, why? Well, I guess I'm lazy or something, but I actually made two more videos on that same day. I just didn't upload them at the time. One was of the Sony TC50, and another one was of a Hitachi cassette recorder. But the thing is, with the Sony TC50, is I had two of these machines. I got one back in maybe 2008 or 7 or around there, and tried fixing it, but the motor just would... I just could not fix the unit at that time, and it was, it was deemed unfixable. I tried and tried to fix the old Sony TC50 I'd got, and... It was a big failure, so that one ultimately was parted out, and I got some good spare parts at the pinch roller and other things from it. This Sony TC50 here, I got this year, and its motor didn't work either, but I had got some little more experience, I guess, since that last time, and I saw the reason why is because of the foam that held the brushes onto the, the contacts on the spindle. The foam was bad so I put new foam in there that which pushed the brushes against the contacts on the spindle and the motor on this one works again so this TC50 is fully functional with the original belt there is some flutter it could use a new belt but I don't think I have a replacement of the right size with the Sony TC50. It is raining outside. so you can see this one works but the other one that I had to part out um, I ended up getting the circuit board from that one and leaving it in record mode and I installed it into the C76. That's how I'm able to record on this one. And you can see I installed an erase head. 
you might think, oh good, I can even erase. Now, no. I put a head in there to erase, and it is a four-track head, courtesy of John Clark. He gave me that head when I visited him for the analog listening party. And um, the head's not bad. All the windings are good. But the problem was, was, was with aligning it. I could not, for the life of me, get it aligned because the mounting hardware for this head is not, well, for the head, for the, where the erase head would go on a talking book machine, it had a place to put an erase head, but it was a different mounting configuration than the standard head mounting. So I, I epoxied this head to the other kind of mounting hardware, which surprisingly the mounting plate art was actually included in the machine. If you look on this other one and I put it into play, you see this little piece come up here, that little guide, it has a little plate where you could put a head. Well, I, I use epoxy glue to hold the head on there, but um, still I could not get good alignment because the way I have it screwed in there. I tried and tried, but I could not get it to actually do a good erase, unless I held it in some weird way manually, but I could never get it mounted on there enough to actually erase. So unfortunately, the tapes have to be blank to use on this machine. So it is AC bias because of the Sony TC50 is AC bias. The erasing I implemented for easiness, I just put DC erase on it, although of course, that was it's wired for DC erase. That doesn't mean it's actually erasing. I talked for over 10 minutes, just about 12 minutes of talking before I even showed one of the machines operate. Now that is a big blunder. That is a big nuisance. Now the erase that I had put in here at times the little bracket thing that's supposed to keep the tape aligned with the head kept nudging and jabbing onto the tape because it wasn't aligned right and it would put little tears on the tape making this tape strictly a testing tape so whenever you hear this music recording you'll hear little dropouts here and there when it goes across the tears which were made on the other side I'd sensed ripped the metal guide piece off of the head so that it won't put those tears anymore on the tape. It also showed just how strong that epoxy glue is. So I will show first playing this song here a 1 and 7 8 IPS recorded using this machine. By the way the playback circuitry for this is still the original circuitry. I'm only using the TC50 circuitry for record. You can hear those little dropouts as where it goes across the tips on the tape as a car. Beautiful. Oh no, my gosh, I, I, I can't believe my eyes. It's useless now. Just in time for the video. It won't even go to fast forward. The motor will not come on. I guess the board finally shifted and. Perfect. The board's kind of hanging in there, too. Automatic stop kicks in because it senses tape movement. I'm thinking that miraculously the belt probably just broke while making this video. And I really didn't want to have to take the case on this thing apart again because managing to kind of fit everything in there together was somewhat of a pain 
but because the belt apparently broke, I can hear the motor start to turn, but the flywheel isn't turning because I, I felt the capstan and the capstan isn't even starting to budge. So, for all you viewers out there, you'll be able to see the modification I did on this machine. Now these machines also, another nice thing I like about them is they use a rechargeable battery under here. This is what the original 1976 battery is, or actually no, this one's from 1977. I guess I then take it this recorder's from 77, obviously. Looks like it's from my birthday in 1977, although that was before I was born. So anyway, you'll get to see the inside of this unit. I took the bat the good battery that's in here came out of here, so this one's strictly on AC only now. Bear with me. You can see ultimately what happened is the belt didn't break, but instead a piece of hot glue fell onto this little wheel here with a clutch mechanism and cause the belt to slip right off. And you can see the hot glue kind of just got into there some. I got some grease on the belt to ensure some good wow and flutter for the sound. Basically we got some improvements made to the machine just to ensure that it uh, doesn't work quite properly. And I say improvements in a very sarcastic kind of way. So let me just wipe this belt off real quick. Okay, the belt's back on. Well, now that I've got the machine open, I can show you the modifications I did. Here is a circuit board from the Sony TC50. You can see a couple of capacitors have been replaced, which checked very low on the SR meter. There is the illustrious bias oscillator its coil and associated transistor and of course capacitors and you can see the record place which is right down there and the, the board has to be kind of pushed under it some because of limited space so the hot glue you can see is where I tried gluing the board of course it never holds that stuff is so weak but it kind of holds it, stuff holds itself in. There's a standard cassette drive. Here you have the uh, servo control circuitry for the motor. I love how everything plugs in. It makes it easier to service. The track selector switch, I used one side of it for the erase head, which of course doesn't erase successfully, but it's there. And then you can just see all the modifications I did. This comes off the auxiliary, puts it through a voltage divider network, and puts it to the microphone jack. So I can record off the line in or off the microphone input jack. Oh wow. The wire is under compression currently. Right here you can see a heat sinks transistor and Zener diode, which is used to give a regulated what I would want 5 volts. It's not giving 5 volts out. It's giving more like 3.9 or around there or 4 or something like that volts to the circuitry because this the TC50 only would use 4.5 volts. And this machine runs on 7.2 volts and sometimes the voltage is slightly more when it's plugged in and I don't want to fry the circuitry for the TC50 so I have this to I didn't want to use a resistor voltage divider, so instead I used a Zener diode and pass transistor with heatsink to power the record play circuitry. So, you can see the machine standard operating. You can see this turning magnet and read switch. So that, that's how the auto stop senses whenever the take up reels motion stops. If I stop it. It turns the machine off. If I start it again, it, it will start it back up.
I'm just trying to remind it of the forgetful collector videos. I remember he would take recorders apart on video to show the inside and I haven't seen a video from him in a long time. Nothing on that side. But it's also got variable speed control, which I wonder why. Fifteen sixteenths now. Now I want to show the other machine here. This one doesn't go very loud for some reason. This other one goes louder. So it's played on the C1. And now we'll play it on the E1. The E1 is strictly 15, 16 inches per second. It's also auto reverse. It has the strongest amplifier of them all. I'd like to demonstrate voice recording on the C76. It seems like it all of a sudden got louder. And we'll run on the battery too. It's forced cue and review, basically. The head is engaged when you're rewinding and fast forwarding. Which makes sense um, for finding your spot on an audio uh, uh, talking book. Downside though is that it's going to add wear to the head. I like using this one with a preamplifier because the thing didn't play all that loud. I would make record and I thought it was not recording very strong on the tape. I would record it in active mode sometimes and it would make it tended to overdrive the sound some, well, depending on how loud the source was. 
although it also tended to sound interesting the way it sounded it was overdriven but um anyway first I'm gonna make a recording with it in passive mode um, let's do it at 178s first I'm gonna show all the speeds 178s and 1560s so switch the switch to record interesting thing is you it will also monitor testing one two three you can actually hear it through the machine the volume control does not affect the recording level it is automatic so we're in um, passive mode on the preamplifier meaning we're not preamplifying at all we're simply powering the condenser microphone we're making a recording on the C76 by Telex with circuitry from the Sony TC50 I know this video is extremely long anyway let's see how this sounds we're going to set the preamplifier to active mode and continue to speak right up to it we're now in active mode and we're speaking right up to it and as you can hear the sound is overdriven but also I can put it more at a distance I can set it down over here and I can speak it about two feet or so away from the microphone and you should get a less distorted sound now if we have that the passive mode at that same distance it will likely not be very loud so I like to use it in active mode to boost the sensitivity now set the speed to 15 sixteenths okay it's in passive mode again we're speaking up to the microphone let's see how this sounds in passive mode and now we're going to put it in active mode now in active mode you can really hear the distortion to an extreme when it's at 15 16 IPS as it overdrives a lot of tape saturation that goes on um, most likely we'll see how the unit sounds this way active mode 15 16 then again in distance 15 16 two feet away or so again active and now let's do it passive now our passive mode again 15 16 is about two feet away and let's see how the recording comes out push that back to play The volume control does not affect the recording level, it is automatic. So we're in um, passive mode on the preamplifier, meaning we're not preamplifying at all. We're simply powering the condenser microphone. We're making a recording on the C76 by Telex or circuitry from the Sony TC50. I know this video is extremely long. Anyway, let's see how this sounds. We're going to set the preamplifier to active mode and continue to speak right up to it. We're now in active mode and we're speaking right up to it. And as you can hear, the sound is overdriven. But also, I can put it more at a distance. I can set it down over here. And I can speak it about two feet or so away from the microphone, and you should get a less distorted sound. Now, if we have that, the passive mode at that same distance, it will likely not be very loud. So I like to use it in active mode to boost the sensitivity. Now set the speed to... Now before we do that, I want to show the level. So it's played on the Tascam 112. Which is given to me courtesy of Amberola 1B. In the active mode, it's very overdriven. I know this video is extremely long. Anyway, let's see how this sounds. We're going to set the preamplifier to active mode and continue to speak right up to it. We're now in active mode, and we're speaking right up to it. And as you can hear, the sound is overdriven. But also, I can put it more at a distance. I can set it down over here. And I can speak it about two feet or so away from the microphone, and you should get a less distorted sound. Now, if we have that, 
the passive mode at that same distance, it will likely not be very loud. So I like to use it in active mode to boost the sensitivity. Now set the speed to 15, Okay, of course this isn't a two-speed unit, so we're going to put it back onto the machine. Okay, it's in passive mode again. We're speaking up to the microphone. Let's see how this sounds in passive mode. And now we're going to put it in active mode. Now, in active mode, you can really hear the distortion to an extreme when it's at 15, 16 IPS as it overdrives. A lot of take saturation that goes on, um, most likely. We'll see how the unit sounds this way after mode. 15, 16, so you get a distance. 15, 16. Two feet away or so, again, active, and now let's do it passive. Now we're in passive mode again, 15, 16, it's about two feet away. And let's see how the recording comes out. So you can hear the interesting recording right there, the way it came out. So also, this can play recordings that are made in half-track mono at 15 sixteenths, but it will only play from one side of it, meaning you can play reverse. This is the old 15 sixteenths IPS program tape, which I recorded uh, starting in 2007. tape over, set the track to three and four, and Similarly, it will play on this machine too. Also last night, there was a, it was called a truth meeting, and um, I recorded the entire thing, well, the entire message on this recorder at 15 sixteenths. To take care of man's case, okay? Listen, the spirit today is an all-inclusive medicine. He meets every need, both, both positively and negatively. Right? By the way, it says, he, uh, uh, Romans 8.13, it says that you need to put to death by the Spirit the practices of the body. That proves the cross, the death of Christ is in the Spirit, right? You see, you can't put to death by yourself. You put to death you know, by the Spirit. How do you do that? You just touch the Lord. And you just take your medicine. Yeah, I love taking medicine. It's so easy. You know, <laughs> you know I mean, if you, you know, I used to have this terrible sinus strange all the time. But I just discovered singular. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and I, I'm just saying, but the medicine, it, the medicine just works. Yeah. I don't have to tell the medicine where to work. When I made this recording, I also used the preamplifier on active mode. I was picking up at a good distance. Now let's play it back on this machine. 
Side two, I mean. Let's try that. Again. I was playing around on the keyboard. Overdriving it. the preamp in active mode and you can hear the extreme overdriven that result overdriveness that resulted. you heard it got louder was whenever I switched the preamplifier to active mode. Preamplifier is running in passive mode, and now the preamplifier is running in active mode, and now it's running in passive mode once uh, to suit more. One, two, three, go. Uh, I'm saying a sentence, both of me at the same time. One, two, three, go. 
I am saying a sentence both at the same time. Now what I did there is because the machine would fail to erase is I would record myself once, rewind it, and say it again. So you had two of me. Three, three, go. I am saying a sentence both at the same time. This was overdriven as well. It was in active mode. stores in the back as well.
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this extremely long video showing these talking book machines and this modified unit which can record talking book format cassettes. I am um, just on eBay today. I bought uh, one of those General Electric talking book machines with the um, a four-track mono recorder designed originally as a recorder. So I'll probably be a couple of weeks or so. I'll get that one in the mail, and if I can get that one working, it is a one that's uh, a non-working one from eBay. I was able to get it for cheap, but um, hopefully I'll be able to fix that. Probably just bad belts or something. Eventually I should be able to have a video of that machine up once I get it. And I have a request out there. The Handy Cassette 2, which is another talking book recording machine. I've seen those on eBay, but they're always very expensive. If anyone out there has one that they want to get rid of for really, really cheap, please let me know, because I'd love to get a Handy Cassette 2 cassette recorder even if it's not you know that well made I heard but I would love to get one of those machines because if you have a portable like that that can record a four track mono half speed would be fantabulous anyway hope you enjoyed the video bye